We're delighted to welcome you to the 14th Jaipur Literature Festival protected by Detol. This session is presented by our festival partner, European Union. Night boat to Tangier. Kevin Barry in conversation with Kaveri Madhuwan. Kevin Barry, who won the International Dublin Literary Award, gives us another gripping novel in Night Boat to Tangier, the unsentimental story of two hardcore brash truck peddlers waiting to at a ferry terminal in the Spanish port of Algeciras. Morris and Charlie, partners in crime and violence, have their own share of anxieties, the immediate one being their need to track Dilly, Morris's absconding daughter who might be a passenger in a ferry. The outbursts to each other pick up incidents that leave the reader in a state of suspense and expectation. Barry creates a noir setting that is filled with rich surprises, his language unfurling the warped minds of two despicable men who draw one's sympathy rather than disdain. In conversation with the author is Kaveri Madhuwan, a novelist who was born in India but now lives in Ireland. Her latest book is The Tainted. Kevin Barry is the author of the novels Night Boat to Tangier, Beetlebone and City of Bohan and three short story collections That Old Country Music, Dark Lies the Island and There Are Little Kingdoms. His award includes the Impact Award, the Goldsmiths Prize, the Sunday Times, EFG Short Story Prize, the European Union Prize for Literature, the Rooney Prize for Irish Literature. Kaveri Madhavan was born in India and moved to Ireland 33 years ago. She is the author of three books of fiction titled Paddy Indian, The Uncoupling and her latest book The Tainted which has received much critical acclaim. Please do remember to comment by typing it into the comment section on your screens. Ladies and gentlemen, now presenting Night Boat to Tangier. Kevin Barry in conversation with Kaveri Madhavan. Hello, everybody from all over the world watching this uh, episode of uh, the Jaipur Literary Festival. Um, I am so honored and absolutely delighted to be introducing Kevin Barry, one of Ireland's favorite writers, to all of you today. Uh, Kevin is the author of several novels. Uh, we are going to be discussing his latest, uh, The Night, Night Boat to Tangier. Uh, but he's also written Beetlebone, The City of Bahan, and uh, three short story collections, That Old Country Music, Dark Lies the Island, and There Are Little Kingdoms. He has several stage and screen plays to his credit, as well as radio plays for RTE and BBC. Uh, he has won the Impact Award, uh, the Goldsmith Prize, the European Union Prize for Literature, the Rooney Prize for Irish Literature, and the BBC Northern Ireland Drama Award, amongst many, many other accolades. Uh, he is also the co-editor and publisher of the annual anthology Winter Papers. And Kevin is coming to us live from Sligo in the really beautiful northwest of Ireland. Uh, you're so welcome, Kevin. Thank you so much, Corbury. Thanks, thanks, thanks for doing the conversation. <laughs> Kevin, uh, you know, in preparation for this interview, I reread uh, The Night Boat to Tangier. Um, mm -hmm. And I have to say, I just once again found myself absolutely caught up in this whirlwind of uh, contradictory emotions because, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's such a... Uh, you know, a funny and yet menacing book. You know, it's a tragedy, a tragedy and, and a comedy um, mm. about the loves and lives of these two absolute dirty, rotten scoundrels, Morris <laughs> and Charlie. Um, now, I was actually at that fantastic reading that you did on Widdy Island for yes. the West Cork Literary Festival. And I was wondering, you know, if you could just do that again for our listeners, because uh, it, was, it was just so wonderful to hear you read your own work. Uh, oh, so sure, yeah. Maybe just, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about the book and then set the scene for the reading. For sure, yeah. I, I, um, so, so Morris and Charlie are, are two Irish gangsters, a little, little past their best, maybe in their, in their early 50s or so. Um, one of their daughters, Dilly, has been missing for a few years. They know she's in the south of Spain and they somehow have information that she, she is uh, about to pass through the ferry port at Algeciras, where, where the boats depart uh, for Tangier. I, I, I'll just read the first page or so from the novel just to give a very, a very brief uh, flavour. Chapter One, The Girls and the Dogs at the Port of Algeciras in October 2018. Would you say there's any end in sight, Charlie? I'd say you nearly have an answer to that question already, Morris. Two Irishmen, sombre in the dank light of the terminal, make gestures of long sufferance and woe. They are born to such gestures and offer them easily. It is night in the old Spanish port of Algeciras. Oh, and this is as 
awful a place as you could muster. You'd want the eyes sideways in your head. The ferry terminal has a haunted air, a sinister feeling. It reeks of tired bodies and dread. There are scraps of frayed posters, the missing. There are customs announcements, the narco trafficante. A blind man roils in night sweat and clicks his teeth to sell lottery tickets like a fat, rattling serpent. He's doing nothing for the place. The Irishmen look out blithely at the faces that pass by in a blur of the seven distractions. Love, grief, pain, sentimentality, avarice, lust, and want of debt. And I guess those, 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 uh, those seven distractions are kind of what, what occupy the book in, in lots yes. of ways. It, it, I'm very blatantly announcing the book's themes on, 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 on page two, I think, when I, when, with, with that sentence I, I concluded on there. Yeah, well, for me, I tell you, when I when rereading it for the second time, when I when I read the line that said "Habla me hole," I just thought, <laughs> "Yes, I'm back in it again." <laughs> it was so fantastic. So, um, I, I'm, I'm actually going to go sort of further on into the book, um, mm. uh, Kevin, and it, 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 you know, sort of halfway through the book, uh, Morris tells Charlie, um, "You know, we are a very anxious people." Yeah, you know, referring to Irish people, you know, we are, we are very, very anxious people. And then just even in one of your short stories, um, you know, The Coast of Leitrim, which I absolutely love, uh, you say that the character in that, uh, in that short story, Seamus Ferris, uh, you know, that he was tormented by his own happiness. Mm. So uh, do you think, you know, in Ireland and Irish people, are we always afraid of, of getting above our station? You know, are we cursed, oh, yeah. with, being, are we cursed with being afraid of happiness? And, yeah. and is that the golden nugget from which you know writers mine their stories? Do you think there, 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 there is there is always an element in Irish life? I think of of uh, what I think of as, as as the bucket of crabs. You know, when one crab starts to claw up the side of the bucket, the other crabs <laughs> pull, pull pull it pull, pull it back down. Um, yeah, it's it's um, you know people people ask often why 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 is there so so much really. Um, world-class Irish writing and what makes us a, a nation of of writers. Um, I th I think you know it's 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 the weather is very significant uh, to live on the edge of the Black Atlantic Ocean uh, yeah. Yeah. and and, and w with that constant schizophrenic weather coming in uh, makes us skittish and a quite 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 a nervous people. I think, but it's it's interesting. Why do you, why why does anyone write stories? Why do, why why do we write books? And and you don't really write because you're happy. And it's like mm. everything is going wonderfully. Yeah, you know? yeah. Generally, people write out of, you know, out of puzzlement that they're, they're human condition, out of anxieties. Um, anxiety is a very useful feed for creative work, for uh, sure. out of nervousness uh, at, yeah. at our tentative place in the world. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's always, always seems slightly reductive to me to, 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 to play up the weather of the place so much. But I do think it has a, has a great um, effect on the Irish temperament and character. Um, Absolutely, you know, yeah. it's, it's a very dreary country a lot of the year. It's wet and grey and dull and murky. So we need to tell each other stories <laughs> to, keep, to keep ourselves yeah. occupied yeah. and entertained. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I mean, I, I know that you've, you've said that, you know, what goes on under the surface of the talk is actually the real thing. Yeah, and that... Uh, and I, I, I mean, are we are we in Ireland always kind of, you know, are we always sort of indulging in double speak? There, there's an element of it. I mean, I think um, Irish people like to talk, uh, and we're good at it. You know, the, 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 we love the sounds of of our own voices. Um, but for all that, sometimes we we say very little. You know, um, yeah. and there's a lot of 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 tension just underneath the surface of the talk and as a writer of stories uh, uh, as a fiction maker that's often where you find your stories in what's not being said Absolutely. Uh, beneath yeah. all this barrage of, of of glorious talk that's that that's going on uh, yeah. the little reticence yeah. that's there yeah. and then the silent kind of power battles that go on between people in conversation um I, th th there's a lot of talk in my stories th th there's a lot of dialogue in my stories it's it's one of the main engines i guess uh yeah. for, for, for yeah. my stories so it's yeah. um and, I, I, that, and I think that's what people love about your books. And well, I certainly for me that was, you know, the, the and, and also the you know the, the the beautiful way in which you write in the vernacular, you know, it's just sort of um, it, it just brings you straight back. You know where you are when you're reading when you're reading, hmm. you know, your your stories and your your books. Um, well, yeah, I, I like the, 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 the vernacular tone, you know. 
the the English uh, language that we that we we use in Ireland is a, is, a, is a kind of a beautiful mongrel, you know. Um, <laughs> it's it's a very it's a, it's it's our own twisted mangled version uh, yeah. of the language yeah. that has lots of going on in the way the sentences are formed. There's there's the underlay of another language of Irish, uh, the, the, in the way that we form sentences in an unusual way. Um, but also, yeah. it, it was very evident, like when I was writing my first um, novel not the first I wrote, but the first to be published, yeah. uh, City of Bohan. Um, and I was, even though it's an invented city in, in, mm. in the 2050s, mm. I was working really with working class speech from, from the cities I grew up in, Limerick and yeah. Cork. And, yeah. it, and it struck me that it was it's such a great resource for a writer. It's such a rich kind of ripe and rude uh, idiom. Um, it's, 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 it's a glorious kind of treasure chest to delve into, to, to make your stories from. Absolutely. And I, I, in a way, I nearly feel sorry for people coming to Ireland, you know, in, the, in sort of recent years, because I just think, oh, my God, I have a 30 year head start on having understood the, the English Irish, you know, the sort of the Irish English, sorry, not the English Irish, the, the you know, the Irishisms are, you know, it would just do your head in, you know, when you first come and you just... Did think, you struggle? Did you struggle initially, Covery? Um, a little yeah. bit because you know you'd, you'd go to a pub and you know somebody would say grand and you just wonder what you know, <laughs> grand what you know yeah. and I mean just the way you said it or yeah. you know the, the the tilt of your chin or whatever could could completely change the meaning of of one simple word so yeah. but I and, I, uh, and tone, I find it amusing tone, now tone, but tone, really, tone is very tricky sometimes um, yeah, uh, yeah. In, in the way Irish people use it. So if, for example, if you're talking to a Cork person like, like Morris and Charlie from Cork and if you ask them, would you go to the store for me? And if they say, I would, yeah, that means no. <laughs> you know? I know. <laughs> we, we, we're kind of, we, we use a, a kind of an ironic kind of tone. That's right, yeah. That can yeah. be, that probably takes a lot of getting used to. Yeah. Uh, so Kevin, what I wanted to ask you was, you know, you you have you have so many, you know, you have a good collection of books under your belt. You've got, you know, screenplays. You've done radio plays. You've, you know, you've uh, you've, mm. you know, written scripts. And you would have have movies out. So uh, I, I was actually very struck by something that uh, you know Morris and Charlie. They, you know, they you you say of them, you know, they're sitting very restlessly on a bench waiting at this at the port, and then you say, and I'm, I quote. Uh, they are at the high vantage atop the stack of their years. They are old enough for the long view in either direction now. I'm just wondering, Kevin, are you at that place now? Are you at I that place I, where you're able yeah, to look back I guess and so. forward? Yeah, I, 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 I had a significant birthday the other year when I when I hit 50, so I'm 51 now. And it is, it's one of the interesting things, um, one of the great consolations, I think, is, as, as, as you get older, is that you realize that you have this kind of um, that the past is such a is such a, a treasure chest again to use that fr phrase in a way that there's as a writer that you know you, you have so much material uh, just from the fact of having you know yeah. stuck around yeah. for, for, for yeah. half a century on, on, yeah. on the planet um, and, and it, it's kind of a it's a weight but kind of a lovely weight I, it's interesting to talk about the past I think everything I write every story every every novel, they're all essentially about the same thing and they're all about characters who can't quite escape from the shadow of their own past. They're constantly trying to step out of their own shadows, if you like. And, yeah, and, and, yeah. and this lends itself to comedy because you can never manage it. You know, you can never <laughs> yeah. escape uh, the shadow of your own past, but, but they keep trying. And I, th I, I, I think that's, that's almost every story and, and, and novel I've written that, that, that that's there as, yeah. as a, a primary kind of um, theme. Yeah, and 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 and, uh, and sort of, are you, are you able to look forward? And what what do you think? You know, what does the future hold? Do you think in terms of your writing? Yeah, it's um, well, it, you know, it's 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 interesting to me. If you had asked me when my first book of stories came out in two thousand and seven, uh, when I was thirty seven, so not particularly a spring chicken to put out a first book, um, but it was. Um, if you'd asked me what I would be doing fourteen years later, now I would have said career novelist you know it would just be novels yeah. novels novels yeah. that was my ambition yeah. at that time um but very quickly after i published my first book of stories and i started to do events and readings and so forth um it, it quickly became apparent that people like to hear my stories um as, as much as read them and it became yes. a kind of a yeah. natural uh transition then for me to think in terms of writing for actors um yeah. 
and, and very often now when I, when I, when I go to my desk, I, uh, I do have actors in mind, whether it might be a stage play or a screenplay. Yeah. Um, and that's something that would have surprised me if you, if you had told me that 14 years ago, but it's, um, you know, uh, for certain, I will continue to write stories and, uh, and novels also, but I, I'm very interested in writing for, for actors. I'm kind of a frustrated actor myself, I think. <laughs> so so I, I, I think they're very closely related, writing and, and, and acting. They're kind of yeah. first cousins uh, of each other, I think. Yeah. I think it's the closest job to writing is acting. It's all dealing with voices in your head, voices. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, but it's it's very interesting because you you know for me just looking at you know your 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 body of work uh, I think th that story you know Seamus Ferris's story the coast of Leitrim you know sort of sort of revealed very suddenly that are you romantic at heart you know for for all the for all the sort of anti romantic stuff that well not anti romantic but you know mm -hmm. you've kind of scoffed at love I suppose in, in a lot of your stories and books and then suddenly this one pops up and we're yeah. I was like <laughs> looking for this man hoping that hoping yeah. against hope and then kind of you know was deflated then that when you know when he was sort of he sort of really sort of stabbed himself in his own foot you know and then suddenly you know we're not going to say anymore but you know just to, to for us yeah. for us readers to see that I think you're a romantic at heart I think so too probably um <laughs> it's 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 uh it's uh, it's kind of Gosh, more than 20 years now that I've been writing short stories mm. in a kind of serious mm. way, in, in a dedicated way. Um, and I think The Coast of Leitrim is my first happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not entirely certain it's going to be a happy ending, but it suggests happiness at the end. Um, yeah. it's, you know, it's interesting that this, this new book of stories, that old country music, it, um, it's, it's nine years since the last book. So, so I, mm. I gathered the stories I'd written in that intervening yeah. period. And it's a long enough period of time that you can, you can see yourself change. Um, mm -hmm. as a writer and I think if I'd written uh, The Coast of Leitrim 10 years ago it, it probably would have had a very different ending um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, and maybe I wouldn't have quite uh, been, been, been in a place comfortable to let the romance uh, blossom in the way that it does in, in, in the story um, yeah. but it's, it's the happiest thing that can happen when, you, when, when you're writing a short story is, is if it starts to surprise you and if it yeah. starts to get away from you a little bit and if it yeah. goes, starts to pull you in a direction you weren't expecting, um, that, that's always what you're, you're hoping will happen, I guess. It did so yeah. for me with, the, with that story. Well, certainly, I mean, the, the last line of that short story is probably the best last lines I've ever read in any short story, you know, in a long, long time. I just loved it. Um, Kevin, you've said that, you know, um, where a writer lives is, is a very important creative decision. Uh, because you know the place always colors uh, colors your work. Um, so tell us about Darks Mountains, and you know tell us about Sligo. And yeah. How does it? How does it sort of? I mean, obviously, it, I, I've read your work, so I know that it permeates your work. Mm. And uh, I've lived myself in Sligo, and mm. uh, have actually got lost in the Darks Mountains. Uh, you know, in the mm -hmm. time before GPS and. <laughs> uh, mm. Uh, you know, from mobile phones. So, um, you know, I, I love the place, but but tell tell our viewers about uh, Sligo, County Sligo, and the Oak Mountains. Yeah, so so I live in it's in the northwest of the island. Uh, I live inland, about twenty miles from from the Atlantic uh, mm -hmm. coast. I'm looking beyond my my computer screen now, and it's uh, there's a lake, Loch Arrow, mm -hmm. uh, with reed fields mm -hmm. going over it. It's actually a beautiful spell of weather we're having mm -hmm. unusually. In February in Ireland, it's actually very pleasant uh, this week, and it's spring-like. Um, we landed here in, in 2007. Uh, my wife, Olivia, and I had just got yeah. back to Ireland. We'd been living in the UK, and it was, it was the height of the Celtic Tiger kind of craziness, and it was, it was really expensive to buy houses anywhere. So, so we came to kind of a, a, a quiet rural place to, to, to buy something. This is an old police station. This, this was once a police station uh, <laughs> built, in, built in the 1840s. Um, and it's funny, it's one of these decisions in life that doesn't seem to be anything got to do with your creative work. It's just a pragmatic thing. Where, where can mm -hmm. we afford to live, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but of course, it turns out to be a very important creative decision because your, your environment, your, your locale is, is, is going to get into the work. Uh, your stories follow you around um, yeah. in the world. Um, and mostly now when I write short stories, they're set in the kind of uh, the interior northwest around here, uh, which is a quiet place, a uh, beautiful place. Uh, they're, they're, it, it certainly has a kind of a melancholy um, ambience to it, I, yeah. I, I think, in lots of ways. Um, well, one of the really interesting things about Ireland as a, as a, as a, as a country is that, you know, it's a small island uh, geographically. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, 
you, you, you drive to Linterford in five hours and, and, and the width of it in, in, in three hours. So it's a small place, but it changes a lot within short, uh, short distances. So it, it feels like a very different country from, from the Limerick and Cork end that I grew up in. Uh, people are more reticent sometimes in speech. They say little. Yeah. It, it, I, I, I dubbed it the land of the pregnant pause when, when, when I moved here first because <laughs> people are kind of watchful in, in speech. And the humour is very yeah. different. Humour yeah. in Limerick and Cork is surreal and 100 miles an hour and very yeah. funny, whereas here it's much more deadpan and straight-faced. Yeah. Um, and it, it takes a while as a writer to tune in to, 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 to new, 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 new ways of telling things that, that you get in, in, in speech when, you know, you know, when people's accent and speech changes, everything changes with it. Their heart and soul changes with that as well. But it's, um, it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's a great place for a writer to be based. It's, it's you know, winter, winter is, is kind of murky enough and, and slow. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. But, but once it, once you get past February, <laughs> usually it's, it's it's a good sign. It's paradise, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I know what you're saying because uh, you know I, I remember when when we first went to West Cork, meeting somebody, uh, you know, and and sort of being introduced, and I just asked her, you know, are are you from are you from from uh, Crossra, which which is the valley that that we were in, and then she was absolutely horrified, and she said, "Oh my God, no, 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 no," you know. And I thought, okay, you know, maybe she's like from hundred miles away, or or maybe she's from England, you know, God knows where. And then she said, "No, I'm not from Crossra. I'm from across in, in Kumar Khan, and literally that was three miles away. I know, you know just yeah, the valley, yeah. three miles away. And but the you know the distinction that." You know, and she, she and and she would still be considered a blow-in, you know. Oh, for sure. Like, yeah, like the but and, and the blow-in is a very important kind of <laughs> archetype uh, in in Irish life, you know. Um, it's a, a blow-in is a useful thing for a writer to be actually Absolutely. because it, yeah. it, you're at you're at a slight distance, yeah, uh, yeah. enough to observe uh, what, yeah. what what's what's going on around you. Yeah, yeah, and and people are quite you know people are willing willing to to sort of open their hearts to blow-ins actually. Um, yeah. Yeah, they can be more, they can be more 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 sort of unguarded maybe yeah, in, yeah, yeah. In, in talking to you yeah yeah and, is, and do you go down to West Cork uh, now would you go regularly would you visit there regularly I I, I, I uh, lived in Cork City for a decade and mm. I, I used to have a tiny tiny caravan uh, out out in Alihis on the Berra Peninsula I, I attempted my first novel there in the summer of 1999 and it didn't work out very well. Uh, <laughs> But it was, um, you know, it, it, it was a very, very important time for me because I, uh, I was kind of getting serious uh, about yes. about writing fiction, mm -hmm. um, and so I've I've happy memories of being in my little twelve foot uh, caravan trying try, trying to write a kind of a the next great Jewish American novel. I was obsessed with Saul Bellow <laughs> and Philip Roth, so I was the next great Jewish American writer in my head, you know. But it was. Uh, <laughs> It, it it showed me very vividly that summer that like the scale of the work that was needed, you know. Yeah. Like the, it's an it's an odd thing, Calvary, about um, literary ability, literary talent. It's not rare that there's lots of it around. Lots of people are able to yeah. to write yeah. very well and write good characters and, and yeah. sentences. But what's what's difficult is 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 the the pragmatic attitude that makes you do that every day when yeah. when you don't feel like doing it. Um, uh, and it's when you get those two in combination that you get a writer. When you have somebody who has the native ability, the talent, but also that that you know that 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 capacity to go and do the work. Um, and I, I, it was a while before I kind of beat that into myself. Um, you know, in my twenties, I would occasionally try to write something, but I was I wasn't dedicated enough. Um, yeah. I, got, I got serious. I got serious about it uh, around the age of thirty when 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 I kind of kind of taught myself okay you, you if you're going to commit to this you have to fully fully commit to it it has yeah. to kind of be the most important thing in in in, in your life yeah. in, in, yeah. in a way yeah, yeah. i mean uh, you actually just pre preempted my question because i was going to ask you you know you, you have said that you know writing is no longer the thing uh, you know the thing that you do but it's actually the thing that you have become and I, I, yeah. I just want to very, you know, sort of really cut to the chase there. Uh, so uh, what I was going to ask you is that, you know, I know there's lots of aspiring young writers uh, listening and watching these events at the Jaipur Lit Fest. And uh, what advice would you have, um, you know, to a young writer? Um, I know you've already just spoken, but, you know, could you? I, th I think, I think, I think, an, 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 yeah, I think an important uh, thing is to read uh, broadly. Mm -hmm. uh, read, read it read a whole I, in my 20s I would be I would be kind of obsessed with one or two writers and yeah. of course you're trying to ape them on, on the page you're trying to copy them 
on, yeah. on the page. It's very important to read high and low, read all sorts, you know, of literary fiction and genre fiction and comic books yeah. and, and the backs of cornflakes packets, read everything. And I always remember that time spent reading is, is never wasted uh, time. Um, yeah. it, it, you know, I think it might have been Cormac McCarthy who said once that there's no mystery to literature. Books are made out of books, you know, the books that you write are made out of all, all the books that you've, you, you've read in your lifetime. And also all the TV you've watched and all the movies yeah. you've watched and all the records you've listened yeah. to. It's all feed, you know, uh, and it's, it's all experience as well that, 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 yeah. that you can bring to the page. Um, yeah. I, I find a very pragmatic um, and practical kind of tip is, is, to, is to write at the same time every day. If you're trying to write fiction, uh, do, it, do it at the same time, even if it's only for 20 minutes or mm. a half an hour just after you get up. Um, you can kind of train your subconscious to, to, to become aware that you're trying at this time yeah. of the day and it might give yeah. you material um, yeah. because, it, you know, it's mysterious uh, writing. It, the only thing it's close to, I think, in, in, in life is dreaming. It, it comes from the same place, from the Simply, murky yeah. subconscious. And when we dream, we're all brilliant storytellers, you know. It, it's yeah. effortless. These scenes present themselves and the dialogue is perfect and there's a kind of a narrative dream logic going on. And then we wake up and we can't do it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so when you're trying to write fiction, you're trying to get to that dreamy sub, sub, subconscious mm. kind of place mm. where, 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 your, where your nighttime dreams come from. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. I mean, and, you know, it's, it's interesting you were saying about, you know, reading the back of uh, boxes of conflicts. So, uh, you know, I started my, my, my writing career as a copywriter in an ad agency. And I can tell you, <laughs> there's a lot of work goes into what goes on at the back of a conflicts box. Um, sure. It's interesting. It, often, like my, 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 my first job uh, was as an old fashioned uh, cob reporter. On, on a city newspaper in Limerick doing the, the court meetings and, yeah. and the city council meetings. Yeah. Um, and I, I did, that gave me so much texture to write um, City of Bohan later, a, a portrait of a small yeah. city, how a small yeah. city yeah. works. And often the best research for a novel, you don't realise it's research for a novel at the time. It's just yeah. In, yeah. In, in your working life or in your day-to-day -day life, you're just, you know, gathering experience all the time that you, you, you don't realize could, is, is possibly going to give you a book someday. Yeah. So, so what, what is your writing routine, uh, Kevin? Do you, do you write every day, five days a week, seven days a week? I, I'm, 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 I have a kind of a lingering kind of a guilt complex that I didn't work hard enough in my 20s. So I work pretty hard now, as in I, I, I will go to, um, I will go to it's, it's a shed, an outbuilding out, out yeah. the back out there, um, pretty much seven days a week. Um, when, when I'm here, of course, I'm, I'm here. We're, we're, we're all at home at the moment with the pandemic. Um, yeah. And I'll try, I'll usually make it in there by about nine or so in the morning and I'll be there till, till noon or so, so three or four hours. Um, yeah. I might be writing for 20 minutes of that, um, but, I, but I'd be there. I, I'd be available if anything stirs. And, yeah. you know, most, most writing days are pretty sluggish. You know, it doesn't seem like you're getting yeah. very, very, very much done. Um, yeah. I have an, a lot of what I call not nothing days yeah, where I kind yeah. of look down at the page or, or the computer screen at the end of the morning and go, well, it's not nothing. <laughs> so yeah, there, yeah. There, there's something. Um, there's something yeah. I, I find the, the critical part for me, the most important part is the, is the first half an hour. Um, it's important that I don't yeah. go online uh, before, oh, before I try yeah. to write because but yeah. my, if you go online, your head immediately goes into that skittish kind of online place which isn't a, a useful place to try and yeah. write fiction from yeah. so and it's possible often, to extricate yourself out of it as well yeah uh, often that first half an hour you're still kind of half asleep you're still in that kind of dreamy subconscious yeah. world a little yeah. and yeah. almost without thinking about it stuff will come i often write uh kind of longhand for the first for the first kind of half oh, hour okay. or so okay. and just see see, see what will happen yeah yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. That's that's loads of things for you know for for young writers to. Uh, when, I, when I say young, I'm, I mean starting out writers. I mean you know, mm -hmm. for any age, um, you know that that's great. Those are great things to, to ponder about. You know, mm -hmm. um, and I think staying off social media is probably one of the, the best advice uh, you know you could give. Um, I'm sort yeah, of I, 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 I don't have any, and it's not because I, I don't like the idea of social media. It's just I know how addictive it would be for me. Yeah, and I'm yeah. sure I, I would be on it all day, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. if I was. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's it's yeah. it's funny. Yeah. I've I've mixed feelings about about the whole kind of social media world. It's been very useful for writers in some way because people talk about your books and so forth online, and it's yeah. fantastic. You get you get readers out of it, but a, but a, just yeah. as a, a time soak, uh, something that eats all your time, I think it's it's, it's problematic. 
For sure, yeah, it's like a septic tank, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the Soko River septic tank. So Kevin, um, I, you know, we were kind of coming towards the end of the of the session, but um, what I wanted to ask you was, you know, the the month of March is is Irish Readathon month. And since we have so many people from all over the world, um, you know, going to be watching this session live, uh, watching se watching this session live, as well as watching it later on, um, I was wondering, would you be able to tell us, you know, what Irish writers are you reading at the moment, and you know, what books would you recommend if if somebody wanted to do uh, Irish readathon? Uh, sure. March? Um, I, may, I might I might mention two, uh, an older book and a, a more recent book. Okay. Um, as, uh, talking about County Sligo, as we have been, uh, a great Irish novelist, Dermot Healy, uh, who passed away a few years ago now, um, was, was based in, in, in Sligo for, for many decades. Um, mm -hmm. Hugely regarded in Ireland. Um, his reputation didn't, was, was strong abroad, but, but he, he hasn't been read enough, uh, I think, outside Ireland. Uh, there's a, there's a, a novel called A Goat Song. Um, a Goat Song. Uh, a Goat Song about, about a, very, a very kind of... Uh, Tormented sort of love affair set against the background of, of the troubles in Northern Ireland in, in the kind of late 1970s, early 1980s. It's a magnificent novel, um, a goat song. Um, I, and I'll go down to, to the other end of the country to, to, to Cork, uh, where the novelist Danielle McLaughlin, um, who's been very well known for her short stories over, over yeah. recent years, uh, but has just published her first novel uh, called The Art of Falling, a uh, yes. really beautiful yeah. piece of work. Uh, set set in Cork City, uh, a gallery uh, curator uh, is, is is the main character, kind of um, kind of kind of caught up in the in the mysterious legacy left by by a, a once famous sculptor. Um, very 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 engrossing um, plot, and, and 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 you move through it very easily. But but the the what what draws you to Danielle's work is uh, just her 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 beautiful sentences she, she's she's a marvelous stylist uh so th that would be danielle mclaughlin the art of falling and dermot healy a goat song would be two i'd mention yeah i actually i have that danielle mclaughlin's book is is uh, hopefully in the post to me at the moment so oh, fantastic. Uh, i'm no, great. It's, yeah, it's, looking forward to, look, looking forward to reading yeah. that yeah looking forward to reading that and and uh, are you reading anything at the moment what are you reading yourself at the moment what have i been reading at the moment i've just finished actually it's a very it's an old novel from the late 70s um Sophie's Choice uh, by William oh, yeah. Styron, um, which was which was subsequently a, a movie which I've never yeah. seen with Meryl Streep. Um, I, I'd read his his uh, a memoir of of depression called Darkness Visible, which is a, a fabulous and, and, and terrifying book. But I'd never read his fiction, um, hmm. and and, uh, and I, I decided to put that right. And it's a uh, it's 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 absolutely spellbinding. Um, about about a survivor of of, of the Holocaust uh, living in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Shortly after after the Second World War, um, again involved in a in a kind of a a very a very a kind of obsessive uh, romance, um, but he just has kind of kind of old fashioned novelistic chops and skill where yeah. he, where he's like yeah. he's, a, he's he's absolutely able to take on the biggest kind of uh, themes and issues and in in a completely unafraid way and it's just i i call it thumb that that magical thing that just makes you keep thumbing through a book that keeps yeah really, yeah makes it yeah. keep turning the pages um fa fa fantastic um it, it had been sitting on on the shelves here far too long without being read so so it, that was a really um a, re a really transformative reading experience. I always think like that that reading is above all transport. It's a mode of transport. Oh it, my god! Absolutely, it, it, yeah. it lifts you up from where you are and sets you down yeah. somewhere else. And yes. we all need it at the moment yeah. in, in pandemic. <laughs> yeah, honestly. and I, and I think I mean that has really sort of uh, you know given such a a boost to 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 writers and uh, bookshops because people people want to go somewhere and if it has yeah. to be via books, so be it. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's 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 strange. With every with every catastrophe, someone always kind of benefits. And actually, book sales were very strong all, all, all last year in, yeah, in, in yeah, the pandemic yeah, time. Absolutely. So it's yeah, um, yeah, yeah. people um, sort of were reminded, I guess, of of the kind of the great solace that 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 a reading life uh, can bring you. Can bring, yeah, yeah. And how, how I mean, has has uh, I didn't I didn't want to bring the the, <laughs> the 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 pandemic into it, but now that you mentioned it. Can I can I ask you? I mean, ha have you found it hard to write during this time? Um, no, in the, at the very start of the first lockdown last March, certainly I felt feeling a little bit distracted. So, so I started a new project, 
yeah. um, and, and was writing furiously. But I looked back at some of those pages just the, the other week that I'd written last March. It was kind of gibberish. You know, yeah. there, there's, there's no, you can sense that there's no con proper concentration uh, yeah. On, yeah. on the page and the story isn't quite there. But no, I settled to it. Um, you know, it, 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 it's been said by, by many writers at this stage, I guess, that, that lockdown life is, is pretty normal uh, for, for a novelist yeah. in lots of ways. Yeah. Most of the time you're at home in your yeah. room, you know, That's not, true, not yeah. going very far. So, so, so in some ways it, it just feels like everybody else is caught up with your way of living. Yeah. Kevin, we have, we have a couple of questions that come in. Um, <coughs> one is I, I, Pia. Pia has asked how much, I, I'm assuming it's about the night, book, uh, night boat to Tangier. Uh, how much of the book is realistic and are the experiences based on someone you know uh, or events in your own life? Um, not particularly. What's... Uh, what gave me the book in lots of ways, I, I, I love Spain. I, 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 yeah. Probably my, 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 my favorite country after, after Ireland. And actually, usually in the winter, for about the last 20 years, I've, I've tried to escape for a few days or a few weeks, every kind of winter for as long as I can afford, really. Uh, yeah. and, and, and drifted around, down, down, especially in the south and Andalusia. Um, and and oh, in recent years, then asking myself... Um, Where's my Spain book? You know, I because I knew I had a lot of texture of, of yeah. just that I could yeah. that I could do the place, but I couldn't figure out who the characters were until I thought, what about if I just put two Irish gangsters down there? I'd I, I, I'd be away. Um, but I, I didn't have any particular uh, people in mind when I was writing Morris and Charlie. Readers will be glad to know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Niharika asks, um, you know, what is the one book that you you can link back to your childhood? And uh, what are the memories that it evokes? Yeah, I have a very strong memory of uh, the first novel that really kind of um, threw me against the wall, you know. And it was uh, one, of, one of my older sisters was uh, doing Wuthering Heights um, yeah. at school. Yeah. And I was, off, um, I was off school with the flu or with a cold or something in, in, in bed all day. And I picked it up. There was nothing else to read around Wuthering House heights and it was again <laughs> transported you know just yeah. taken up from a suburb in Limerick City in the early 1980s yeah. and set down on a on a wind blasted Yorkshire moor mm. uh in in the 1820s or, or 30s or whenever it was set um and it's a book I still return to sometimes Wuthering Heights and, and and read a few pages here and there just for its I love its atmosphere it's kind yeah. of uh dark yeah. gothical atmosphere that was yeah. the first serious book if you like yeah i've been reading the famous five and and yeah. secret seven yeah. and all those kind yeah. of books but that yeah. was the first proper book that made me realize that the the great power of this thing you know what, how it yeah. can absolutely transform your your world yeah 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 uh, we have a question from nisha and she asks are there any books by indian authors that you have had a chance to read um the 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 Sorry, I I'm, put you on the spot there. <laughs> I, I'm struggling. I, I, I've Romesh, what's his name? It's the name I'm struggling for. I, I read with him at the West Cork Festival. Um, he's oh. an Indian. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's Ramesh. It's a long Gun surname. Uh, Gunashekara? Uh, yes. Uh, fa yeah. Fa yeah. Fabulous short stories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I, 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 in honesty, my, my reading life, I've, I've always been obsessed with American writers. And, and much of my reading life has looked that way, uh, in yeah. that direction, to, to, yeah. to, and cut yeah. off other directions, uh, yeah. which I'm trying yeah. to change. I don't, I don't read enough. Like a lot of people, I don't read enough in oh, translation. There's just never enough time, though, Kevin. You know, yeah, so there's, I mean, there, there's no, yeah, and there's yeah. there's so yeah. many great books. Yeah, yeah. and you, uh, I, I think possibly the last question because we're we're coming nearly to the end. But uh, Nirija asks, uh, how do you re react to comments comparing? Uh, night night boat to waiting for Godot. Yeah, it's well. I've I've discovered with this book that it's very easily to get yourself compared to Beckett. You just yeah. have to put put two Irish men waiting for something, and all the Beckett comparisons start coming in the door. Um, you can't be unaware of the fact if your story is two Irish men waiting that 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 there is this great 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 monument of 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 a, of a text uh, behind you. But I, I was actually thinking about a different. Uh, playwright more so which was Harold Pinter when I was right. writing it yeah. and it's, yeah. as a, it's something you said a while ago you, you mentioned that the book is kind of funny and menacing and yeah. uh, that yeah. that's something that Pinter does marvelously that sort of comic menace yeah. um, especially yeah. in this kind of 1960 plays like a birth, the birthday party and the caretaker uh, so I, I was looking for he was, he was the playwright who was it was in my mind more so than Beckett even when, when I was writing Night Bolt. 
Yeah. Yeah, I have to say, as when I was reading Night Boat, I mean, I, I had like literally like, you know, very Hollywood kind of Hollywood style, you know, rising crescendo of music in my head as I was reading it, you know, just literally expecting something desperate to happen at <laughs> any moment. <laughs> that was uh, really fantastic. So what, what are you working on at the moment, Kevin? I've been working on a screenplay for, for, for Night okay. Boat to Tangier, um, ad adapting it. Um, it's interesting. It started, the first attempt at it was as a play script. It very quickly became yeah. a novel because the story kept going into the past. And now I'm trying to readapt it as a screenplay. And it's, it's, been, it's been fun to, to, to have Morris and Charlie back on my desk again. Okay, fantastic. Uh, one last question, because I, uh, I've just been told we have very little time left, but one last question to squeeze in is, um, Ananya asks, how different is your writing process when approaching the short story versus a novel? That's a really good, great question. Yeah, I, uh, what I love about the short story is because of, uh, of, of my own impatience as a person that if it goes well for you inside a week or two, you can have a finished object yeah. uh, on yeah. your desk, good or bad, but it's finished. Uh, compared to the long, slow slog of a novel, that that's very attractive, and it makes me keep going back to the story as a form. Um, they're they're very difficult. They're 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 very difficult to get right. Um, you have you have so little space in which to trap the reader. You know, mm -hmm. you have to get the reader inside a half a page and make her or him believe in your world and your characters very very quickly. Uh, so 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 it's a difficult form, but 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 I enjoy the 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 difficulty of it. Uh, timing is mysterious as well how to get your timing right in, in, in a short story and it's a, it's it's a game you can, you have to play by instinct almost yeah absolutely yeah i mean uh, i have to say you know with with the coast of leitrim i think that it's a it's a master class in storytelling because you have er all those elements you know you're drawing your reader in straight away there's you know the the timing as you say it and uh, mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, but you, I, I do find, and if anybody is writing short stories, what I find is that you have to write lots of them to get good ones, you know, yeah. Mo most, I, I probably write about nine or 10 a year and, and yes. only one or two will ever go outside the door. I, I, but it's important to kind of finish everything, I think, yes. uh, finish everything yes. you start. Um, and it's only by finishing the bad stories that you kind of earn the good stories when, when they come along. Yeah, because I, I, I know, uh, you know, John Paul McHugh has a book out and, you know, you've, you've given it high praise. Uh, you know, gold rush. Uh, pure gold. Oh, sorry, pure, pure, by, pure gold. <laughs> by John Patrick McHugh, yeah. Yeah, who's a, who's a fantastic young, young story writer, very, very, very dedicated yeah. to the. And the I mean, he says he takes two two years to write one story. I mean, that's just amazing. Yeah. I just find that fascinating. The process of of honing. I I, I I have had stories that I've had on the laptop for years as well, and and you you keep you go back and you look at it, and you you you're never quite sure what's wrong with it. Uh, yeah. And sometimes it's rare, but sometimes you have the, the happy thing of four or five years after you first write a story, you figure out how, how to fix it, what you need to cut yeah. from it or what, what you need to yeah. add to it. Yeah. Kevin, I'm so sorry, but I, I've just been told time's up. And so I, all I have left now is to say thank you so much for this absolutely fantastic and really interesting chat. And uh, delighted to have uh, you know, had a chance to talk to you and, uh, and read your books all over again. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Covery, thanks so much. It was yeah, a treat. Thanks, Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Kevin Barry and Kaveri Madhavan for such an interesting conversation. Thank you so much for being part of Jaipur Literature Festival 2021. We would also like to thank our festival partner, European Union, for supporting this session and our celebration partner, Diageo. And thank you all for watching and being such a great audience. Please stay logged on to continue to watch with us the series of exciting sessions featuring a stellar list of speakers that have been specially curated for you. As you're aware, the cultural sector has been critically impacted by the pandemic and while we have braced ourselves to embrace the new normal, we have struggled to ensure that we can continue to bring you a free flow of knowledge and ideas. We would love for you to support us at Teamwork Arts. You can also tweet using hashtag Jaipur Literature Festival 2021 at the rate Jaipur Lit Fest. Remember, the festival is protected by Detol. Hope to see you in the next session. Thank you so much.